Welcome back to another vlog where today I'm going to be diving into a video from Dave Ramsey. If you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, where have you been hiding? He's like one of the biggest financial gurus out there. And he's actually based here in Nashville, just a little south down in Franklin. And his big, uh, his big shtick is going out and telling people to never use credit to buy anything, always pay in cash. And obviously when it comes to real estate, that can be, in my opinion, very bad advice. Uh, but Dave has helped a lot of people, and as always, I have not watched this video before. Julian Rafe just pulled it out of the YouTube ether, so uh, let's have a live reaction to this video. Micah is with us in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, Micah, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. The video, by the way, is it's, it's titled, Is Investing in Commercial Real Estate a Good Idea? Obviously, we know it's a good idea, but let's see what Dave thinks. Hey, thank you. How are you doing, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I was kind of wanted to ask the question um, of maybe what would you do if you were in the situation that I'm in? Um, I have accumulated some, some cash over the years in our savings account, and I'm trying just to find a, a safe way to invest it, but but that I'm where I'm getting better returns than what I'm seeing in my um, CDs right now. I'm very, very conservative when it comes to money. And through this process, I've stumbled across like uh, triple net leases where say in Orlando or um, either you buy a, a restaurant chain and they eat, and they lease it back immediately after the sell for say a seven percent return, you know, through, through the rents. Mm -hmm. So the caller is calling in and asking Dave his opinion on triple net real estate investing, which we've done a lot of videos on. Check some of them out here. I'm a big fan of triple net real estate investing, especially for a guy like this that is super conservative when it comes to his approach at investing, because triple net investments and single tenant net lease investments can be almost entirely passive. They typically have tenants with very high credit, which means that the security behind the lease is very strong. I don't know really what he means by that, that the tenant's not really willing to pay much of a cap rate. Um, that Maybe he just misspoke, but that doesn't make any sense. The tenants don't typically pay on a cap rate. The tenants will sign a lease with the developer or with the owner of the property, and then the owner will sell that investment based on a cap rate. So you as the buyer, if you're buying a single tenant net lease or a triple net lease investment, that cap rate is the number uh, it's, it's the percent return that you could expect to receive if you paid all cash and essentially had no other closing costs or anything like that. What you're, what you're talking about is a 7% cap rate is how yes, this thing's capped true. out. Um, and so uh, you're just buying real estate with a super high quality tenant with a low rent. That's right. I mean, it's a 7% cap rate. You are buying a high quality tenant in some commercial real estate with low rent. We look at net leases as basically the bond, like the, the bond equivalent in commercial real estate. You're not gonna get a very high return, but your security is very high. And so if you look at the risk reward uh, chart, I mean, it's basically gonna be very low on the risk, which means it's also gonna be very low on the reward. Now, for some people that makes a lot of sense, right? If you're very conservative, you just wanna park some cash, get a little bit of a return, uh, maybe do some accelerated appreciation and get some tax write-offs, phenomenal opportunity. If you have a 1031 exchange and you just need to place capital somewhere so that you avoid paying capital gains taxes, these triple net investments are a great opportunity. Rent. That's all it is. <laughs> So, if I mean, spent the I'm same amount like of money on dollars. Is that? I'm sorry. Is that better? Uh, I'm still looking at like two million dollars to invest. Okay. So if you right bought another two I million dollar savings account, if you bought another two million dollar property that didn't have a triple A tenant in it, but that you could attract good quality tenants to, that pay, um, you know, you might make a ten cap rate. Very true. 
right? So, so Dave really does know what he's talking about here, which is kind of exciting to see. Uh, so when you buy a property and you buy it with a tenant in place, you're essentially buying the cash flow that it produces. Again, it's lower risk. So somebody's gonna be able to charge you a lot for that investment because they can, right? It's secure. Now, if you're willing to go and buy a piece of property and do the strategy that I use with my investors, which is typically heavy value add or just ground up development, you're actually creating value. So instead of buying this secured investment with very low return, you can actually create a much higher return just by signing new leases, adding new tenants in, doing whatever. Can, but would I, I'm looking also at investing as little time as possible because I still, that was gonna be my next point. So the guy is saying he wants to spend as little time as possible on this investment. If that's the case, do not go with a value add or ground up development route because that will take a lot of time. And if you're not paying attention to it correctly, you'll lose a lot of money. So again, it just depends on how much time, how much effort you're willing to put into it because single tenant net lease and triple net lease investments can be absolute mailbox money. I own a business and so mm -hmm. I'm doing that full time and I just, I'm yeah. looking for something better than a CD, but mm -hmm. something where I, I invest about that much time. Then the cap rate would be fine. I mean, the, the AAA tenant, credit tenant situation would be fine. I, I have never bought one of those properties personally. Uh, I've attempted to a few times, but I just demand more of a rate of return, but I own a lot of real estate and so I own a you know a property management firm that my son-in-law runs for us as a part of the deal right so you know I'm set up that way where you're not and in your case uh, with your risk aversion and you're not wanting to have any hassle factor a triple net triple a credit tenant means that you're doing no maintenance you're not even paying the taxes or insurance they're paying them directly and they send right. you proof of payment that's true. There's a bunch of different ways that you can actually structure these leases, some of them where you pay it as the owner and then they reimburse you. But again, that's one of the most attractive things about triple net and single tenant at least investments is that the tenants are responsible for almost all of the expenses of the property, right? So they pay for the property taxes, the building insurance, the common area maintenance, meaning, you know, to sweep the parking lots and mow the grass. They pay for all of that so that you as the owner, you basically collect your rent, pay your mortgage, and typically that's it, uh, unless there's some other landlord obligations in the lease that you would be responsible for. All they do is send you the rent. That's it. And you own the building and it appreciates. Now, usually these are long-term leases. And so the downside is, is the building is not going to appreciate as much as other real estate like it because it is hampered by this lower rate of return lease not always true but the point that he's making is correct so since these buildings or investments are sold on a cap rate as the lease gets lower or shorter uh, you know you buy it at 10 years you sit on it for five years there's only five years remaining on that lease the value of the property is going to decrease because originally it was based on the value of the lease that was being paid every month right on a cap rate now, the closer that you get to the end of that lease term, the more the property value is going to be based on the location of the property and the condition of the building. So technically on a price per square foot comparable basis, the building is still appreciating in value, but there's not gonna be a lease associated with it that you can buy, which really is where the majority of the value comes in on these single tenant and triple net lease investments. It is also enhanced by this lower rate of return lease if the uh, buyer is you, you know? But that you're, mm -hmm. you're the type of buyer, and so where a, a piece of real estate goes up in value, it, that lease owns that property. So if they have a, a long-term 20-year lease on it, if the piece of property across the street sells for triple, uh, your value doesn't go up. Yes and no. Again, it kind of going back to that past point, yes, it will go up, but you're still locked into that lease. So if you are considering purchasing these single tenant and triple net lease investments, it's very important that you look at how many years that tenant will be there because you might actually want it to be a shorter term than a longer term, depending on what you're wanting to do with your wealth. You know, if you have a, a lease expiring in the next seven to 10 years and the area is growing, 
that's pretty ideal because by the time that tenant has paid you out, you get the building back in an area that's had high growth, you'll be able to lease it for far more, increasing the value of the building, and then you can flip it on a cap rate and make a pretty good spread. Now, if that tenant has a 20-year lease, you're gonna to have to sit on it for another 10 years while everything else has been built up around you, then you may not get to uh, take advantage of that appreciation in the same amount of time. Now, obviously, when you go back to, to sell the property 20 years from now, it will be worth even more than it was 10 years from now, but then you're encountering the time value of money issue. Could you have sold that property 10 years ago, put that money into something else that gave you an even higher return? Because that lease has got that thing encumbered for 20 years. You follow me? We're actually going through this right now on a shopping center that I bought back in April. Uh, it was about 330,000 square feet that we closed on with some investors here in Nashville. And some of the leases run through 2034. Well, we're trying to redevelop the property. That was the entire reason that we bought it. It was zoned for high density commercial. We can go back and build 1.5 million square feet or more. And so we would be doing that today. We would have already started had we not been locked into these leases. So it is important to consider why you want a long-term lease. The steadiness of the cash flow is great, but it could also impact in a negative way the future value of the property, depending on what your goals and your strategy is. Uh, you're only, your value only goes up if your tenant goes out and then whatever market goes in. Now, the downside is, um, you could lease to Sears or Toys R Us. We've seen that quite a bit over the past few years where you've had Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, all of these big high credit tenants completely go out of business or file for bankruptcy. So just because a tenant has uh, what's considered high credit doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have a secure lease. So it's important that you understand the tenant and their business and their financial situation if you're going to be buying these single tenant or triple net lease investments. Circuit City. McCircuit City, yeah, exactly. Circuit mm -hmm. City. Which, by the way, were all credit tenants at one time. Mm -hmm. They were all high, um, low cap rate um, uh, type tenants and would have been considered that. And I got a Toys R Us sitting about a... Uh, 300 yards from where I'm sitting right now. That's I don't own it, but I mean it's a building sitting over there empty, and uh, mm -hmm. and you know that 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 landlord now has a piece of property that is no longer encumbered by the lease. <laughs> I know exactly where he's talking about, and I guarantee you that that landlord is very happy that Toys R Us vacated that property. It's in the middle of one of the best districts, shopping districts in Nashville. And it's actually the highest density location for headquarters, for corporate headquarters in Tennessee. So that landlord getting that space back, they're going to do just fine. <laughs> right, right. So is there any, is there something else that I'm not aware of where no. I could put this money, where I could get some use of it? Or no, I think, yes, you could go and invest as a limited partner in somebody else's deal. So that's what we do with a lot of our investors. We are actually the active partners within these deals. And we deal with people all the time that either don't have the experience, don't have the capital, or just don't want to spend the time going through this process. It's what's called a syndication. Check out this video here where I dive into what a real estate syndication is. But essentially, you just pull your funds together with a group of people, and the sponsor, which you know would be myself or some other sponsor in that case, goes out, finds the deal, puts it together, runs it, gives you the return on your capital, uh, way better than a 7% typically. Um, so there are other options if you do want to invest passively in commercial real estate uh, instead of being active. You could also invest in real estate investment trusts. You could land bank, just go buy something and sit on it for a while. There are a number of different options if you would like to explore that. I think we actually did a video on all of the different ways that you can passively invest in commercial real estate. So check that one out too. I think, I think this is really, really good for you. I think you're going to like this. If you want to, uh, you know, if you don't want to put it all in one property, um, I wouldn't, I'd probably just try this, you know, pick you up. If you got $2 million to play with, pick you up a $1 million deal. And then the next time you do it, you might crank it up. Another notch up for you in risk would be a traditional triple net lease. Uh, but not a credit tenant. And where you'll find that. So again, this is going to that risk reward. Credit tenants are typically your national corporate brands that have hundreds of locations. 
which means the chances of them filing and going for bankruptcy and going out of business are very slim, right? So again, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's treated like a bond. So these are very low risk, very low reward because of the credit worthiness of the tenant. Now, if you're going with a more local group, maybe they have one location or maybe they have three locations. Obviously the, the, risk is going to be a little bit higher, you should be able to seek a higher yield on an investment like that. Find that that is really, much, you know, probably a, a full point or two up on your cap rate. Um, in other words, you might make nine instead of seven would be a good warehouse. If you have anything that is listed at a 9% cap rate in a good area, give me a call. You cannot find those anywhere right now. A lot of warehouses are triple net. The tenant takes care of everything and sends you a check, but the tenant may not be a household name that is a, a, a restaurant chain or Walgreens or a CVS or something like that, right? Which just about all of those deals are, uh, I looked at one around the corner here, it was a Pier 1 Imports was a triple net, or a triple a credit tenant with a triple net. I looked at a while back, um, about, about five years ago, I guess I looked at that deal. But anyway, that that you can move up by in, in cap rate and a slight amount in hassle with a warehouse scenario, and that might be something to play with as your next purchase. But I think this is a fine purchase for you. Another one that people do, it's even a lower cap rate, is uh, like a post office, because your tenant is the ultimate credit tenant. It's the U.S. government. So again, there's a range of credit worthiness and you're gonna have your local groups on the low end, your small businesses, your startups. You'll have regional groups, then national groups, and then of course the US government. So post offices, I mean, obviously it's like one of the most secure investments you could ever make, uh, but because of that, you're gonna get almost no returns. Uh, they're typically in very good locations though, and the US government is likely going to renew that lease. So if you ever do get that back, it should be fairly easy for you to, to release at a much higher rate to another tenant, um, or you could just count on the US government staying there for the rest of your life. And so when you have a federal government, as your, the, the federal government as your tenant, uh, and you've, you did a build a suit, lease back with a post office deal, you know, your cap rate may be down even lower it might be i will say that we've worked with the government on multiple leases we've got them in one of our buildings right now the state of tennessee so not federal but state of tennessee they are very difficult to work with because they have their way and that's the only way that they're going to do it which makes sense right i mean every corporation has their lease their methods so of course the u.s government's going to have their own uh and it is not always fun or honestly worth it or it might be down at five or four and some change right now but it's almost like buying T-bonds at that point or T-bills. Uh, Cause again, you're, you're, there's zero risk of bankrupt, well, virtually zero risk of bankruptcy. So um, something to play with, it's interesting. Um, be sure to actually look at the um, balance sheet if it's a publicly traded credit tenant yep. and look at, uh, read up on them, read the, um, what people are saying bad about them. Read the annual reports. Typically these, these companies, if they're publicly traded, they have to release annual reports talking about the state of the company. It's basically, uh, you know, their their state of the union for the business. So it's very important that you read through those because it'll say, you know, hey, uh, we're looking to actually terminate a bunch of leases this year, or we're looking to expand a thousand stores this year. So if you see stuff like that, obviously that can give you either a red light or a green light for that investment. How much debt they're carrying, um, what cash position they're in, and those kinds of things. What's happening with their pro with their um, with their uh, uh, cash flows and their profit margins and their trends and their stock price and you know just do a you don't have to do a detailed thing. You don't have to have a master's degree in finance, but just do some reading and understand, get a feel for how strong this credit tenant is because there's a there's an array of tenants. Oh, I thought that was one of y'all's phones. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> that would be considered credit tenants. In other words, you would want to smell that uh, Toys R Us was deeply in debt. And if you had uh, been pitched Toys R Us before it made I'm loving this like camera pan out with the rock and roll music in the background. Dave's a rock star. 
So there you have it for my uh, live blind reaction to Dave Ramsey talking about investing in commercial real estate. I think that his advice is pretty spot on. Some of the stuff that he said was not really correct, but his advice is spot on. I mean, if you are looking for something that's high security, and you don't want to deal with it at all, then a single tenant net lease, you know, cap rate investment that's relatively low is probably a good opportunity for you. However, if you want to achieve higher yield and you want to aggressively grow your wealth and your passive income, then you may want to explore some other opportunities that are more value add, ground up development, or even investing with a syndicator in their projects. So there you have it. Cue the rollout and the rock and roll music.